So I'm back. It's your, your brother from another mother. I got invited back up here, but we all have the same father. Amen. I said we all have the same father. Amen. Amen. Um, I can't tell you guys what an honor it is to be invited and how excited I am to speak in front of my church family and today um, my birth family. Ah, this wasn't a part of the message. <laughs> you know, this year, um, my grandmother passed uh, January 6th. And uh, my grandmother, many, many, many years ago, was one of, was one of the founding members um, of a church plant in Detroit, on the east side of Detroit, called King David. And so, one of the reasons that I'm up here today, one of the reasons that I walk in the faith that I have, is because of the life that she lived. And so, um, to see my family here today um, support me in this. Means a lot. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean, but thank you, guys. This is, guys, I, my mom, my Auntie Beanie, my cousin Donette, my Uncle Willie, and then my dad, um, through love, Christy's dad, is, uh, they're all here to support today. So if you see them, give them a big hug. Give them a big mosaic welcome um, as we go throughout the day. But, all right, back to the message. <laughs> so excited to be here, guys. Noah started us in a series called Life Together, and the, the core components of the series are about community and diversity. And Noah spoke about um, how difficult it is for us to live that out today as, as believers, because our culture is set up in a way that it, uh, it, it's, it's against us to living, to living that out. He actually portioned it to swimming upstream, and he asked us a few weeks ago, you know, uh, you know, if you had to swim upstream, what would you do? And I raised my hand and said, I wouldn't. One, because I don't know how to swim. <laughs> but two, uh, I hear that it's very difficult, and as people try it, they quit. But I want to talk about today that regardless how difficult it is, it is essential to being a follower of Christ to live in community with other believers and to be an advocate and a, and a celebrator of diversity. Um, piggybacking on Noah's message a few weeks ago, he actually portioned it to being a quarterback. And, you know, I don't know if some of you guys have been watching, but my Michigan Wolverines are 5-0 and right now uh, with J.J. at the helm, you know it. And uh, so we, we have a great quarterback at Michigan. But Noah said, could you really be a quarterback if you don't have a team that you're playing for. It's like, well, you could have the gifting of being a quarterback, right? Like, you could have the height, you could have the arm strength, you could have the speed, you could be able to read a defense. But if you're not actually out on a field with 10 other individuals out there with you, diverse individuals at that, you know, we'll go further into that, you're not really a quarterback. You know, you, you might want to be a quarterback, you might have the ability to be a quarterback, but you're not actually a quarterback unless you're in this community and a part of a team. The same thing goes with us as followers of Christ. A, an essential, a core part of being a follower of Christ, the way it's designed is that it is done in community with a diverse group of individuals um, in that community. And so when, it, when I'm talking about diversity, because the whole world is talking about diversity right now. I want to be careful in, in what, what I am meaning when I say diversity versus what you may hear at work. I mean, at, at work we have a big initiative around diversity, inclusion, and all these different things. And it's about primarily just getting a big group of people together that don't look anything like you so that we can feel good about all the different people that we have that don't look like us around us. And, and so in a church, in Mosaic, that's, that's not the, the heartbeat of what we're doing. 
yes, there is the pursuit of having, you know, a, a tremendous of individuals. Am I cutting in and out? Am I good? A diversity of individuals, but it's diversity under the lordship of Jesus Christ. That's, that's a difference. It is not just diversity from the standpoint of, hey, let's have a bunch of people here. It is diversity submitted to the lordship of Jesus Christ. And so with that, we'll pick it up in Genesis 1, 26. Um, if you have your, your phones or your Bibles, your paperbacks or your, your uh, U-versions, you can open up to Genesis 1, 26. So in Genesis 1... God is uh, given the account of how he created the world, what he did to create the world, the order that he created it in. And we see this whole celebration of him and his glory and his majesty and the different things that he's, creation, that he's creating. We see uh, or read about light being uh, given to the world, that the earth is formed, that there's stars in the sky, and there's all these different things that God is doing to glorify himself and to create this world. And then we get to verse 26. And then God says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every little thing that moves on the earth. Of all of creation, of all the different things that God has made in all these different galaxies, guys, I don't know if you know this, but we are currently standing on a big rock floating in the middle of space, orbiting around a sun with a bunch of rocks going around us, with millions of galaxies going out there, and the only thing that we know of that is made in the image of God are human beings. What an incredible honor it is to, to be a human being. But we're created in this image for a purpose, and it's, it's subtly shared, or not subtly, it's subtly to us, but at this time, it was very clearly shared what the responsibility was to be created in someone else's image. The word they use there in Hebrew, my dad is, uh, uh, knows Hebrew very well, so I'm very careful in how I communicate this, but, but the word there is selim Elohim. Selim, meaning image, and then Elohim, meaning God, right? Most of us know Elohim, God. Selim might be a new word to you. But the idea there is of an image. Now, when we think of image, most of us probably think of your iPhone. You take a picture of somebody, and now you have an image. They didn't have iPhones back then. They didn't have cameras. An image for them was a statue. So think of the way a statue is created. Like, like what, is, what is the purpose of a statue? A statue is created not for itself, but to glorify something or someone else, Right? A statue doesn't bring glory to itself. A statue celebrates the one that, the, that it's created in the image of. For example, I got a guy, Lucky, over here. Lucky's from Chicago. Ball player, you know. Got a nice left-hand jumper. We won't go much further than that. But Lucky um, can tell you, if you go down to the United Center in Chicago, there's a statue of a guy outside of that place. Lucky, who's the guy? Michael Jordan. MJ, 23, if you go to the United Center, you'll see this big, huge statue. You'll see a guy stretched out like this, looks like he's flying through the sky, got big old hands like he's about to dunk this ball from the free throw line. You'll see the Bulls jersey on his chest because that was his team. You'll see, you know, calf muscles popping out and triceps and everything to show his athleticism. You'll see the Jordan brand shoes, Nike, because that was you know, his brand, and underneath you'll see six, uh, six championships, six finals MVPs, five regular season MVPs, 10 scoring titles. This whole thing is created not to celebrate bronze, not to celebrate copper, the materials that it's made out of. It's created to celebrate 
Michael Jordan. In the same way, we are created not for ourselves. We are created to glorify God. He made us in his image not to be a static statue, but to be a living, breathing statue that shares his glory around the whole world. So we, we glorify God in our actions, in the way we love people because God is love, in the way we forgive people because God forgives, uh, in the mercy that we have for people because God has mercy, in our generosity because he's generous to us. And there's all these different facets of how we glorify him because it's of his character. I want to tell you guys today that two of the ways that we must glorify God because it's in his character is in community and in a celebration of diversity. One of the things that um, Noah pointed out to me earlier this week as we were going over the sermon is that the kings in the ancient Near East, when they wanted to show their dominion in an area, they would put up a statue. So if you're walking to a territory and you see the statue of Nimrod, you would know that Nimrod has dominion in this area. The idea for us and the imagery that they would have had that as we are fruitful and multiplying and, and growing, that we would be taking God's dominion over the entire earth. That everywhere that you see a human, it should be recognized that in this place, God is sovereign. And so, again, what an incredible uh, honor it is to be a human being and then our responsibilities and glorifying God there. But before we go any further... We have um, two group questions that we were going to put on the screen. I was, and you know it's because me, we're going to have three questions anyway. So in your group, here are your questions. You are asked to make a statue of, of a loved one. Who would you choose and what would the statue look like? Question number two, if someone was defacing that statue, what would you do? And question number three, if your loved one saw a statue of themselves representing things that they hate, how would they feel? So those are your three questions. We're going to give you guys a few minutes. Joe's laughing because it's three. We're going to give you guys a few minutes to discuss. So we have, we have my brother Kyle over here. And oh, give me the name of the work again. Kids food basket. All right. So let's say the city of Grand Rapids decided they're going to make a statue of Kyle to celebrate his life. And you say, what? And we ask Kyle, what kind of things would you want that statue to look like? And Kyle might say, hey, you know, first thing I want is to have a Bible in my hand, you know, that, that speaks to my faith and my walk with Christ. You know, in my other hand, I want to be holding Melanie's hand, my wife, because you know what? Like, this is the most important earthly relationship there is to me. It's like, you know, and then I'd also want to have, you know, a lot of food baskets around me to talk about the life that I've lived and fighting food insecurity in the city of Grand Rapids and, you know, make sure I have my, my Michigan Wolverines jersey on, Kate McNamara, right? So he, he would be pleased with the statue. And he'd say, okay, and then let's say we create the statue, Instead of having, you know, Kyle looking nice and shaved, got the arms and everything going, we got him sitting on a couch with a pot belly, a too small Michigan State shirt on, belly sticking out on his iPhone, you know, taking selfies. He would be like, what, yo, what is this? Like, what, wait, wait, like, where, where did we go wrong? Like, clearly this is my face. Clearly this looks like me, but this doesn't actually represent who I am. This represents actually nothing of me, like, and he would probably have a problem with it. Or let's say Miss Victoria, who has been fighting, uh, you know, racism and division longer than many of us have been alive, and let's say we're going to make a, a statue for her, and, and we ask her, you know, what kind of things would be important to you? And you say, hey, you know what, well, I want to make sure that I have my Bible too, I want to have my family surrounding me. I want to have us locked in arms because we're unified. I want to have a smile on my face that speaks to me being a, a joyous person. But I also want to have a fist that represents that people that couldn't fight for themselves. And we say, okay, Miss Victoria, 
You know, we're going to make that statue. That's what we're going to do. But instead, when she sees the statue, it's her, or, oh, no, and she also wants to be outside, right? She also wants, Miss Victoria has to be outside with the, you know, the wilderness, the flowers and everything. And instead of her getting that, what she gets is her sitting in an office cubicle uh, on a jet ski. It's like this any sense. First of all, I, like neither one of these things represent my life. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with being in a cubicle and there's nothing wrong with a jet ski, but this does not represent her. And if it's her image, it should be representing her. Or even worse, let's say instead of something like that, we is vehemently against. Like, let's say we have her hanging out with Ku Klux Klan people or something like that. She was like, whoa, like, Y'all got to tear this thing down. It may, it, it, she may hire somebody to tear it down. She may burn it down herself. But that thing would be destroyed because it does not represent her. It does not represent what she's expressed the way that she wants to be represented. God has shared with us, among a multitude of things, ways that he wants to be glorified, ways that he wants to be celebrated. One of those areas, among many, is community, is to be glorified in community. Again, we are created to glorify him. He wants to be glorified in community. For us to choose a lifestyle that rejects being in community with other brothers and sisters is to intentionally reject God on what he has publicly expressed that a way that he wants to be glorified. So we're intentionally saying, God, I know you want to be glorified this way. Never mind, I'm going to do something else. And if we were comfortable doing that, the question would, come, would then be posited, are we really who we claim to be? God's created all of us uniquely in his image. He's created each one of us. If you look around, all different skin tones, all different heights, all different, you know, cultures and ethnicities. He's created us all individually as a reflection of him to glorify him amongst the earth. But for me to look at somebody whose skin is different or whose culture is different, who is saying they're a brother in Christ too, but I won't be in community with you, is to then reject what God has created to glorify himself. And guys, I, I would posit that if, if those, if those areas of community and diversity aren't important to us, if being in a community with other brothers and sisters aren't important to us, then being a follower of God is also then not important to us. Um, I, I'm sure you guys aren't surprised to hear that 2022 isn't the first time the church had difficulty with community and diversity. It's been going on for a while. And I'm not just talking about like the 1950s or the 1800s. Paul actually uh, was dealing with this with the church in Corinth. And if you open up your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 12, uh, I'll show you, uh, I'll read for you what was going on. So it says, for even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, it's not for this reason any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body. It is not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary, and those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor, 
and our less presentable members become much more presentable, whereas our presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are Christ's body and individually members of it. And, <clears throat> and, we'll, and we'll pause there. Let me, let me do an example. Let me ask um, Monte, can you come up here? Monte serves in our United States Army. If you give him a round of applause. Monte, my mom is a little thirsty right now. I would like you to just give her this drink of water. So guys, this is the church. This is what the church should function like. Look at that. We're able to give somebody a drink. Hand, round of applause for Monte. Monte, you have another seat. Joel, can you come up? So that's the church. You guys remember those uh, commercials where it used to be like, this is... This is uh, your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. This is kind of like one of those moments, okay? So that, that was the church. So this is the church with, this is also the church, but this is a church with racism and division, and we don't hang out with those people, and, and we, don't, we don't join with this group. So we, we have some fracturings in our body. So Joel, um, Mom Zick really needs some water right now. Could you take that over to her? But wait, racism says these arms aren't a part of the body anymore. This arm isn't a part of the body either, nor is this leg. Yeah, so now can you, can you, just, can you please just take that over to Mom? Zick, please. Everybody, give Joel a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Guys, by the time that water gets there, if it ever gets there, she doesn't even want it, right? Because it's got nostril juice and everything else mixed in between it. Again, both of them had all of the same available parts you know, that, that were accessible to them. But only one of them choose to have all of the parts in unity. And this is what we look at like as a church today, trying to reach people, trying to accomplish things. We're so fractured. It's incredibly difficult too. I mean, if I, if I passed my, gave my phone over here and said, hey, can you guys pass it around and look at this picture? Oh, by the way, you can't use your hands and you can't use your mouth. Like, this phone would go nowhere, right? You got, we couldn't even pass a phone around a single group of people, yet we try to do this as a community of believers and we look insane. And it does not glorify God. It's not, that, that isn't the way God designed it. And guys, so for us, we have to be intentional about making sure that we're unified as one body. It's not just an idea. It is a necessity. We need each other. Even as your individual body, you, you need your other parts, right? Like if I was, if, if let's, let's say Kyle over here, if Kyle was playing basketball and he landed and hit his knee, Bruised his knee. Kyle, what would you do? Scream and cry. What else would you do? You would ask for help. What, what, do you, what, what would be the first thing? I mean, let me give you an example. If I, if I came up, Kyle, and somebody punched you right here, hard as they could, what would you do? Stop. Stop. Okay. I'm going to give you an illustration. Generally speaking, somebody would guard, right? If your arm is in pain, the first thing you do would grab your arm. Right? If your knee is in pain, first thing you do is immobilize. Notice this. If this shoulder is in pain, a lot of the body would come to help it, but the shoulder would not be able to help itself. It needs the other parts of the body to support it. If you injure your knee, your knee doesn't help itself. Everything else around your body helps your knee. Imagine us as a body of believers 
refusing to be in community with each other, refusing to be interconnected, and all the suffering that we're dealing with, which could be helped, which could be absolved if we were just with each other. Just with each other. Here's an here's a, uh, example I have this week. I have a porch that looked like it's for Afghanistan. And we happen to have a member in our church, John, and his brother Lucky, that knows how to fix porches. I didn't have this porch looking terrible for two years now. One relationship, one meeting, all of a sudden, boom, it's fixed because we're connected. How many other things could we, could we be accomplishing and solving? That's just my personal life, but from an advocacy into our communities if we were connected. Last thing, and then we'll, then we'll, we'll close. And our body, our body is made up of a bunch of different cells, right? Everybody knows this. We have a bunch of different cells that are created to be unified in your body to operate under the design of the body. You have white blood cells. You have red blood cells. Red blood cells move oxygen. White blood cells fight disease, right? Hair cells, nail cells, all skin cells, all different kind of cells. What happens if a cell decides, you know what, I'm not going to go along with how the body wants to be. I'm just kind of going to do my own thing. And I'm going to continue to multiply and create more people or more cells just like me that ain't participating in what y'all are doing. In medical terms, that's called cancer. That is what cancer is. Radicalized cells, they continue to multiply and do their own thing, not in unison, not in harmony with the rest of the body. What are we doing in churches? We create our own setup. Hey, we ain't going to be a part of them. They can do their own thing. We're going to do our own thing over here, but we're going to continue to try to grow. We're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, but we're not going to be with them. We're not going to participate with them. What do we do in our body when that happens? We go see an oncologist, and we fight against those cells. And we go see a surgeon to cut out those cells. Imagine us praying to God to heal our bodies of cancer while we're actively trying to be a cancer inside of his body. How wild is that? And that's what we're doing when we don't decide to be in agreement, to be unified as a community of believers, guys. It's not just an idea. It's not just a vision that Noah has. It's like, hey, man, we should be interconnected. It is essential. It is essential to being the body of Christ. It is essential to us living out the way that guy has for, for us to live out. One of the practical steps we have here at Mosaic uh, as a way to, as a, like a baby step start, that is through small groups. We have small groups on Thursday nights, and it is to give us an opportunity to be together as brothers and sisters um, in the Lord. So I'm going to challenge you guys to this. If everybody that's a member of Mosaic can pull out your phone, can pull out your phone, open up your calendar, to October 6th, which is our next opportunity to meet, set a reminder at 5 o'clock that we have small groups at 6 o'clock. And let's be diligent about being together, guys. Let's be diligent about being in each other's lives. Let's be diligent about honoring God. The same way that we aim to honor God in our marriages, that we aim to honor God in our parenting, that we aim to honor God in, in uh, feeding the homeless and taking care of people, let's be that diligent on being a community of believers together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love and grace, your mercy. Father, what a privilege it is to be considered one of your children. And Father, I pray that we would not take lightly what it means to be an image bearer of you, Lord, that we would shift our mindset from making decisions based upon selfish ambition, selfish ambition, but making our decisions based upon does it glorify you. Father, that you've given us your word in specific ways that you want to be glorified. I pray that we would step into that if we're missing it, Father. I pray that we would be a community that reflects the community that 
that you're in, a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Father. I pray that, as, as Jesus prayed, that we would be one as, as you and the Son are one. And I pray that through that oneness, that we would be an example to the world of who you are, which is what Jesus said. By, by us being one, we will show the world who you are. Father, if there's anybody in here that um, isn't a part of that community because they're not in right relationship with you today, Father, I pray that you would that you would soften their hearts now, Father. That you would let them know that they were created for a purpose. That they were created by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to live a life that glorifies you, Father. I pray that any lies of Satan that, that may have been shared with them, Father, that you would just purge their minds of it. And Father, today could be a day that they walk in right step with you and into a family, into a community of diversity and oneness. We thank you for all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.